this Second Amendment's becoming a suicide pack, it feels like. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, and that's the only question the community wants. So how do you get, what about, I mean, what about our kids when they're going to school? Um, what more can we do? And, you know, again, I, I, we look at that all the time. I mean, I, we did another half dozen gun safety bills last year. We'll continue to find whatever loopholes we can and continue to lead the national conversation on gun safety reform. It never seems to stop. California Governor Gavin Newsom was visiting victims of Monterey Park mass shooting when he was pulled away to be briefed about another mass shooting, this one in Half Moon Bay. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 40 mass shooting events in just 24 days in this whole year, 2023. The archive defines a mass shooting as an incident with four or more victims shot, not including the shooter. We keep having the same conversation, but tonight, we are not going to just move on. So let's discuss with Juanita Tolliver, MSNBC political analyst and host of Crooked Media's What a Day podcast and MSNBC senior, MSNBC senior political analyst, Matthew Dowd. He is a former George W. Bush strategist and founder of Country Over Party. Juanita, it can be very tempting to give in to the numbness. There's nothing new to say. Let's move on. Earlier tonight, I wasn't sure if we should cover it, but I was wrong. So how do we treat this issue with the urgency it deserves? By naming the fact that a national solution is still needed in order to prevent this from ever happening again. And the public support is there for it, Stephanie. 57% of the country, almost 60% of the country still believes we need stricter gun laws. And that was after the last bit of legislation passed last year. 55% of the country still believe that we need to ban high-capacity magazines, which was used by the shooter in Monterey Park. And that's why I think it's important that we're talking about this, because more and more Americans are going to feel the pain and trauma and devastation and impact of gun violence, not just in mass shootings, but in gun violence that happens every day across the country. And my big fear is, if we look away, then that's more reason for Congress to not act. That's more reason for our le state legislators to not act. And so emphasizing this, and the only key to stopping these shootings is to limit access, remove the weapons of choice that we've seen repeatedly used by these shooters. That's what's gonna be key here. That's the only thing that's gonna change the situation we're uniquely experiencing in this country. But that's what we keep doing over and over, Matt. After each of these events, Republicans say it is time for thoughts and prayers. It is too soon to politicize this tragedy. But then the news cycle moves on in 24 hours, and we forget about it until the next shooting happens. Well, they forget about it. I mean, hopefully we all don't forget about it, but they yes. forget about it. And the problem, I mean, we know what to do. As Juanita laid out, we know what to do. This isn't rocket science. We know exactly what to do. And we know her, her stats that she laid out is true among gun owners. Gun owners want the same thing as I'm as a gun owner, want the exact same thing. When you poll gun owners, they want universal background checks. They want limits on weapons. They want age limits. They want a, that's gun owners in this. The problem is, is that we have a Republican Party today where who only is concerned with 5% of the population. And that 5% of the population is who votes or determines who's going to win their, their primaries. That's the problem. It's not the problem the American public wants this done. The American public keeps rallying on this. The American public keeps saying what they want. The Democrats in power know that we want. But this is, to me, this is an example of the structure that exists today and how it is aligned is, is not a democratic structure today. It, we don't have a democratic structure today. If the vast majority of the country wants this done and it's not getting done, something is fundamentally broken in our system, fundamentally broken in our system. And this is an area I wish, I mean, we could go to any number of nine, 10, 12 other countries who aren't having this problem and say, what did y'all do? What do y'all what do, what do y'all do here? And they would list off the exact same things that Juanita just listed off that they do. They have none of these problems. And so having a show on this, talking about this is important. Speaking out it continues to be important on this. But in the end, until the Republican Party moves off the five percent and pays attention to the majority, we're going to keep having this problem. Juanita, here's my head scratcher though. When people say we can't politicize gun violence. Isn't that exactly what we need to do? If this endless tragedy 
is not enough for a political solution, a change in government policy, what would be? Right. And we see the trauma. Look, let's be real. After Sandy Hook, I thought something would happen. But dead children in a school, dead teachers in a school is insufficient for the Republican Party to say no to the NRA, to reject the donations, to do what's right to actually save lives. And that was more than 10 years ago now. And, and what's, what's wild to me is that there seems to be no ceiling here. Nothing will ever be too much for the Republican Party to turn their backs from the NRA. As Matt was talking about, the system is fundamentally broken. The system is related to, again, donors having control and full industries having control of what legislators are committed to doing and setting boundaries on what they won't touch. And sadly, gun violence prevention is that third rail for the Republican Party. They live and die by that NRA rating. And that needs to change because what they need to prioritize is the needs of their communities. But I don't know what the hell is going to wake them up, Steph. But Matt, there's a whole Stephanie, lot of other... Yes. Stephanie, I wanted to say something about this thoughts and prayers thing, which is every time I hear it, I get so freaking irritated, especially as a person of faith and as a Christian. Let me give you an example. Damar Hamlin goes down, right? He goes down on the field. Everybody offers their thoughts and prayers. What happens if somebody standing on the field and said, no, 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 no paramedics. No, we're offering thoughts and prayers. Do not try to resuscitate him. And then the medical ambulance comes and they say, no, 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 no. We're giving him thoughts and prayers. And then all of a sudden we look at it. We could have, we could have done all these things that we knew exactly what to do. Damar Hanlon passes away and we're like, well, we offered him thoughts and prayers. That's exactly what we're doing with gun violence. We know what to do. Thoughts and prayers by the, I'm all for thoughts and prayers, but thoughts and prayers require action. And until we follow thoughts and prayers with action, we're going to keep, we're going to keep having these deaths after deaths after deaths across the country. And it's a uniquely American exceptionalistic thing. Not that we're saving lives, but lives are dying violently and it's only in America. Wow. Matthew Dowd, we're going to give you the last word on that one. <laughs> Juanita Tolliver, Matthew Dowd. Thank you both so much.